Hi everyone and welcome back to Gabriella's Kitchen. I know we've had a little bit of a quiet week because we've been filming Come Dine With Me In Our House. If you haven't seen the videos, have a little look because you are hilarious. So, a new week, I'm ready to show you loads of new recipes and I'm going to show you one today that a lot of you have been asking for. Super easy, we're going to be making homemade pasta and we're going to be rolling it by hand so no machines or equipment are needed. For this recipe, all you need is eggs and flour. Today I am going to show you um, adding a little bit of olive oil, which will just make it easier for you if it's your first time by making the dough a bit more pliable. But basically the ingredients are flour and eggs, that's it. So let's get started. So let's just talk about the basics, which is the flour. So for making pasta, you want to use Tipo 00 flour. You can get this everywhere. Um, Matt Ass and Bold Street definitely does have it if you're struggling in the supermarkets. Now, a lot of recipes use different flours. The most basic, easiest recipe is just with this flour. If you're really struggling, you can just use all-purpose flour, which is plain flour. Now, some recipes have the addition of semolina. Now, the reason why you'd use semolina is it just gives the dough a bit more stability and it'll help hold the pasta shape more. So we're making something like little bow ties or an orecchietti. By adding the semolina, it just means it's going to hold its shape better because it's a coarser flour. So I'm just going to be adding a bit of this to my dough today, but honestly, you can just do this with flour and nothing else added is fine. Um, so the rule of thumb is it's 100 grams of flour to one egg, and that is as basic and as easy as it gets. So this is just something you can whip up really quickly any day of the week. As you get more confident and have a bit more experience with making pasta, you can start to experiment with adding just egg yolks and leaving the white out, and this will give you a really rich pasta dough, and as well, it'll have a really nice yellow color. By using a whole egg, it makes it easier for us to work with, and it just means the color might not be as golden. So, 100 grams of flour to one whole egg, and I've just substituted with 75 grams of semolina. So I've got a good little combination there. So for making pasta, we're gonna keep it really traditional and we're gonna do it right onto our board. If you've got just a regular work surface, that's fine. If you wanna keep it tidy, you can do it in a bowl, but we really wanna give ourselves some space and get our hands working. So on a wooden board is the best. So we're gonna start by sieving our flour right onto the board. So now we've got both of our flour, we're gonna just give them a good little mix so they're all combined. And what we want to do is we want to sort of create a flour volcano. So we want to create a nice well in the middle so our eggs can sit in it. It's important that we keep the walls quite high because we don't want our eggs to spill out. Another easy way to do it is just take a bowl and twist it around and that way you get a really nice well like that. So now our well is ready for us to add our wet ingredients. So we're going to go straight in the middle with our eggs. To our eggs, I'm going to add some salt. We're all cooking and baking, we always season. And I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of olive oil. This isn't always traditional, but what this will do, it'll just keep the dough quite loose and help us with kneading it. Just a couple of teaspoons. So now, this is the fun part. You can start to break these eggs with your fingers, or you can start off with a fork. This part is really important. You want to really, really slowly incorporate the flour. And the reason why I say to do it slow is because we want to hydrate that flour. If we start to mix it all together straight away, we're going to have really big clumps. So just start to mix your eggs and your oil so everything comes together. And slowly, slowly, you're going to start to draw in tiny, tiny clumps of the flour and start to work it in. As you can see, I'm just really taking my time at this part. I'm not rushing it. I'm just using the tip of my fork just to drag it in. So I'm happy now that everything's starting to come together. So I'm gonna to start to bring a little more in than before. And I think I'm about 20 seconds away from really getting my hands involved. I'm gonna to start to use my hands. I'm gonna to start to use my bench scraper. This little bit of kit is amazing. It's great if you're making bread, if you're doing a cake and you want a really smooth finish. It's good if you're wanting to chop some onion and garlic on your board and you want to scrape it into your pan. These 
these little tools are amazing, you can't live without these. So just start bringing it all in, incorporating all that wet into the dry. Let me get my hands involved now. And don't panic that it looks like it's not gonna to come together, you just have to keep going with it. And honestly, to make homemade pasta is the most rewarding thing ever, especially if you wanna get everyone involved in making the shapes, you can get so creative. The great thing about fresh pasta is, once you've made it, you can put your little bundles into the freezer and you just have fresh pasta on hand. They'll stay in the fridge for about four to five days. And it's cheap, it's the cheapest thing to make. So I'm just using the whole of my hand, the weight of my body, just to bring it all together. If you feel that your dough is just really dry and you're like, there's no way I've got enough liquid here, you can add a splash of water if you want. It does depend as well the size of the eggs that you're using. You know, if your eggs are really small, you might need to have a few splashes of water just to bring it together. As you can see, it's come together in a loose ball. It's quite flowery. Now, I need your attention. You need to listen very carefully now. We need to knead this for minimum 10 minutes. We need this dough to become really elastic really soft, really silky, really smooth. So the best piece of advice is, is to get a timer on. Nina, behind the camera, is gonna put a timer on for me for 10 minutes. And we're just gonna go and we're gonna keep on kneading it if you're finding as well that this ball is too big, it depends how many grams of flour you're using, cut it in half, get one of the kids to knead the other half, get the husband to knead it, get the wife to knead it, get the grandma to knead it, you know, get the help involved, but we have to knead this for a good amount of time. So I'm gonna bring the camera in close and I'm gonna show you the technique of kneading. Nina, timer on. <laughs> right, let's go. <laughs> so the action of kneading is, with the heel of your palm, you're gonna push out, stretch it, bring it back. Push out, bring it back. Push out, bring it back. But if you really wanna just do it anyway, you wanna just roll it, roll it, roll it. Feel free, I mean, there's a classic way to knead and there's a personal way to knead. As long as you're moving it for 10 minutes, you can do it any way you want to. And if you feel like your dough's too wet and it's the opposite, just add a little bit of flour to the surface. If you feel like it's sticking, just keep on going. This is a good arm workout. This is especially good for the triceps, which are our bingo wings that everyone hates in the summer. <laughs> so like I said before, if you want to, cut your dough in half and get someone else to help you. Eventually we are gonna put our doughs back together, but many hands make light work. So time has just gone off, we've been going for 10 minutes and at this stage you want to check if you're there. If you're not there, you will have to go longer, it depends how hard you've been needing it. You've had your little sister do half the dough for you and I've made a cup of tea. Um, so we ended up separating our doughs and we put them both back together now and if I bring the camera in close, I'm going to show you what you're looking for. You want it to be smooth, when you push your finger into it, you want it to bounce back. So it's really nice and smooth, it's silky, it's soft, it's not sticky, it's not dry. And when I put my finger in it, it bounces back. So the dough needs to rest now, like as you can imagine, it's been taking a real beating for 10 minutes, so it needs to just chill out. So we're gonna put it into the fridge or you can leave it on the side, as long as it's completely covered. So I'd say cling film, go for two layers, that's just your insurance that you're not gonna get any air through it, it's gonna dry out. You wanna let it rest for at least half an hour. In that time, you can put on a sugo. That's what I'm gonna do. Wrap it up, and we'll be back in half an hour. So the dough's ready, we've had it in the fridge for an hour now. We can do it for half an hour if you're a bit of a hurry. So by adding the olive oil, it's made the dough stay really soft, which can make it really easy for us to work with. So we're ready to start rolling our dough. A little tip here now is have a little bowl of flour or semolina on the side, so we can just keep our surface nice and dusted, which will stop our pasta dough sticking. So we're gonna to start to roll it out. Traditionally, when you hand roll pasta in Italy, 
the Italian nanas. They have huge rolling pins, which just means you can roll out huge sheets and get the job done a lot quicker. But today, I'm just using a regular one. So to make this easier for us, because we're not using the pasta machine, I'm just gonna cut my dough into smaller pieces, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. So you can just go in half. Make sure that the half you're not using just now is covered. You do not want it to dry out. So just a tea towel on top will work fine or a little bit more cling film. So we're gonna to start to roll. I'm just gonna show you the process of rolling and then from that, I'm gonna show you all the shapes you can make by hand. You can get really creative with this. So you wanna just start adding even pressure the whole way down. And once we get it thin enough, we're gonna do a really simple book turn just to sort of refold it and roll again. And that's just gonna help make the sheets really tender. So now I've got a thick sheet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a book turn. So basically this just means you fold it twice like a book. So one, two, push it down, and then we're gonna re-roll this. And that's just gonna help add some layers and really make the dough nice and tender. When you're rolling the dough, don't give up. Sometimes it can be a bit disheartening. You might think it's really thick and it's not gonna get any thinner. Keep going. A good little tip is if you want, let the dough hang over the edge of the board and gravity will pull that down, which will just help stretch the dough. Just keep on moving it around, keep on going. I'm gonna stick at this for a good few minutes. And the little trick to know when your pasta is thin enough is very romantic. It should be so thin and see-through, you can read an Italian love letter through it. Or you can just put your shopping list underneath if you can read it, you know you're thin enough. You can also get your younger sister to start rolling the dough for you if your arms get tired. thin and lovely and long. If you feel that it's getting too big to manage, don't worry, just go in half with it and carry on working on smaller pieces. So our pasta is nice and thin now, you can see it. it's so smooth and silky and we're gonna do the little test to check if we can read through it. So in true Nonna style, which means grandma in Italian, we're gonna sit down and start to put our shapes. So the first one I'm gonna show you is Mal Tagliati which translates as badly cut. So for this, all you're gonna do is trim off all the end bits that look untidy. So I'm gonna use a little pastry cutter. You can just use a knife, I'll get it. Yep, this will work perfect. So from that, I'm just gonna square off my dough and I'm left with these little random scraggy bits and just chop them any which way you want, like so. So you're left with these little broken pieces like this. So this is really, really good if you're making a minestrone soup and you want to bulk it out a bit. You can just toss this in when the soup's ready to serve, bring it to a boil and cook it for three to four minutes. This works really well with a nice creamy butter sauce. So this is Mal Tagliati. So that's our first shape done. Just get a little bit of flour, dust it, and that can sit in a pile. Don't worry about it sticking. As long as you've got a little light dust and a flour, it'll be fine. Next shape, let's talk about Papadelli and tagliolini. So for that, we're just gonna take our pasta sheet, nice and simple, and we're gonna roll it over on itself as if you were rolling up a fruit winder. <laughs> I don't know what else you'd be rolling. Don't do it tight, just be really gentle. So from that, we're gonna do, we're gonna get a sharp knife for this, for one second. So, tagliolini, which is a really thin one, just with your knife, go all the way through, like so. Get a little bit of flour on your hands and just separate your ribbons nice and gently. And there you have homemade tagliolini. Next shape, I'm gonna show you pappardelle. So that's a slightly chunkier one. Um, so it's really thick ribbons. So again, just take that wider, like so, unravel it, and you've got lovely pappardelle. This is amazing with a homemade bolognese. And um, there's a recipe on that on my channel that would go amazing with that. When you're storing your bigger passes and your little piles, just really gently twirl it into a nice little parcel and just leave it to the side. So next one I'm gonna show you is Farfalli, which is the little mini bow ties. So these are a great little tool. You can go on Amazon and you can buy um, pasta cutting kits, or this is just a little pastry roller, but feel free again, you can just use a knife for this. So for this, you wanna get nice little rectangles. So I'm just gonna square some off. 
And I'm just gonna show you a couple just for an example. And all these little scraggly bits you're getting again, just put them aside and that can go perfectly for your maltagliati we did earlier on. So now we're gonna make our fourth alley. So the way you wanna do this is, with your finger and your thumb, you wanna nip one side, then nip the other side, and then nip it together with a little bit of force, give it a little squeeze, and you have the cutest little bow tie. If you haven't got a cut and you've just got a knife, same again. Nip each side and bring it in. And the beauty of making homemade pasta is you can really make any shape you want. If it doesn't look quite right, it doesn't matter because it's handmade and people are always going to appreciate a handmade pasta over a store bought one any day. The next one, one we're going to do a ravioli. So this you need a pastry cutter and if you haven't, don't worry, you can use a teacup or a glass. So you want to get two nice thin circles out and you can fill this with whatever you like. If you've got leftover bolognese, that'd be amazing. If you want to do a little spinach and pesto, that'd be really good. Um, I've got some goat cheese and roasted red pepper. Nina was making arancini yesterday, so I'm going to fill that. Again, guys, this leftover bit to you, don't waste it. Take your cutter, take your knife. And this is great just to keep it in the freezer as well. Um, when we were babies, that's what we used to eat all the time, was little bits of pasta with fresh sugo. It's a great one for kids, um, so definitely keep all your scraps. So for the ravioli, you don't want to overfill and you don't want to underfill. If you're getting really confident with your pasta and you want to give one a go, an amazing one is an egg yolk ravioli. So you'd put a little maybe ricotta and lemon border with a piping bag and then put a raw egg yolk in the middle, seal it and boil it for a few minutes. And then when you crack it open, you've got a liquid egg yolk center. That's amazing. So then just take your little mount, put it on top, and then you want to seal it. When you're doing ravioli, it's really important to push the air bubbles out. Because if you don't do this, when you put it into the water, you're going to get big bubbles and it'll explode. So just take your time and really work your fingers around the filling. So to seal it, you'll just want to use a little bit of water or a little bit of egg to get your ravioli to glue together. Or if you're going to be using a pastry wheel, that will act as a seal as well because it's applying pressure, so just all the way around. And there you've got a ravioli. So now I'm going to show you how to do a little arachetti. So you want to get a little log like that and chop off just a little nugget and you want to use a butter knife, nothing with too much of a sharp edge. And with it, you're going to put pressure on and you're going to push the arachetti away. And then you can just reform it. If I show you up close, that motion of rubbing the knife is giving the most amazing little grooves inside. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Um, and that's just going to cling to sauce. So use your fingers. If it hasn't come out perfect, just, you know, rearrange it. So that is arachietti, which literally means little ears in Italian. So the next one I'm gonna show you is called garganelli. So this is really good with the sauce you want to stick. So I'm gonna go with a little nugget again. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a metal skewer, something round. I'm using one of those um, recyclable straws and just Roll it back and forth, like so. And you've got a really nice little tube. And that's great for getting sauce to stick in the middle. You see that one? So with this as well, it's perfect for lasagna sheets if you want to make homemade lasagna. Again, it's the recipe for that on my page. You want to scroll down. So, that is it guys, I've shown you now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different shapes you can make from one simple pasta dough that had eggs and flour. This is something that's really good to spend the day with the kids getting involved, it's so rewarding and once you've made homemade pasta, you won't want to buy it again, or you will when you go back to work and you've not got time to. <laughs> 
So I felt carried away with myself again. I've got one more shape to show you, a little tortellini. So with that, all you need is a little square. Now traditionally, a meat filling is always crucial for a tortellini. So we normally do a mixture of pork mints, beef mints, a little bit of mortadella ground up. But I'm just gonna show you with some of my goat cheese filling. So with the square, you wanna just take it, corner to corner, like so and then seal it so you left the little half triangle and then knit the corners together, squeeze them and that is the cutest little tortellini. She just can't help herself, she loves to get involved. What are you making, tortellini? Yeah. Good job, and then take the two ends of your triangles Bring them together, seal. And tortellini is amazing just in some homemade chicken broth. That's a really, really great meal. If I can do a tortellini, guys, so can you. There you go. So all of our pasta has been made and prepared now. So if you want to let it air dry for half an hour, as I said before, this just helps it hold the shape. If you were to cook it straight away, Things like your little farfalle would lose the shape and they'd open up. So letting the air dry them just helps them firm up and get a bit stronger. If you don't want to cook all this pasta now, I mean, why wouldn't you want to cook seven different types all in one go? You can just store this in the freezer if you want. Um, as long as you keep it in nice little portions like so, you can even put it into freezer bags or into Tupperwares, or it'll keep in the fridge for four to five days. Um, I'm gonna put a pan of water on now to the boil, let this dry, and I'm gonna show you how to cook some off. So we've left our pasta to dry for half an hour now. It's a little bit firmer and it's a little bit drier. That's ready to go into some boiling water. Make sure your water's heavily salted if you wanna really sort of get some flavor into our pasta. The pasta's floated to the top, it's had two minutes, and I've just given it a little taste and to check that it's okay. So we're gonna take that out, drain it, and put it straight into our pasta sauce. You can use whatever sauce you like. I've just got a little truffle parmesan cream sauce today. So I've just coated my pasta in all the sauce and it's ready for plating. There you have it guys, homemade fresh egg pasta with a truffle and parmesan cream sauce.